DIY video. If you're new here, you're very welcome. My name is Sandra and uh, I do a little bit of everything on this channel, but the main thing I do is vlogs and DIYs. Um, yeah, so today is a DIY. Um, still missing to get the bedroom done, but the previous DIY you saw I did yesterday actually, so it hasn't been that long. Hang on guys, hang on. Um, you know every once in a while you see a dress online and you just go, I have to own that dress. And then you go in, you find that dress and you're just like, okay, maybe this one is either way out of my budget or out of my budget right now, but I still kind of want to own it. That is when DIYing stuff comes in handy. So today we're going to do a dress. I'm inspired by a dress that I found. I'm going to show you where I found it. Um, but I'm essentially going to try and just be inspired by that dress and just create one that has um, the same type of style and then we'll make it our own. So let's go! Okay, so um, this is the dress that I found. I'll make sure to put a picture up here so you can see it. So pretty. Uh, anyways, I saw this dress on the Fashion Bug blog uh, Instagram page. Immediately just went, oh my god, it has feathers, it has sequins, it has flamingos, it has everything. Where can I get this dress? I went in and I could see that it's like this little bespoke, really like high fashion store. I think in Ibiza, it's called. Annie's Ibiza, the Instagram profile, so go check that out if you want, if you have the budget. I'm just jealous of you. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I did get a few fabrics. I got this one, which is like a really soft one. It has a little bit of a gold um, line in like all of the lines. And then I got that yellow fabric, which is just beautiful. It's like super, super, super nice. I think you can see the shine in both of them here. Um, and what I will do is I'll still I'll create the same type of dress from both of them. I think here I have a bit more fabrics. So I might create some shorts as well or do something else. But I want to create the same type of dress with both of them. This one a bit more stylish, like low key, so no feathers, no sequin, nothing. And then this one over here, I'm definitely adding feathers, but um, yeah. I'm really really excited. I also got a few zippers. I want to make a zipper on the side of the dress. So I want to make a zipper like here on the side of the dress and then um, yeah we'll see. Tomorrow I'm going to a store in Copenhagen that I've been wanting to like visit for a while. Um, maybe they have some fun appliques or something that I can you know, just incorporate into the yellow dress if we're gonna make it a bit fancy anyway. But um, to do this project, I also require Dolly, so I'm gonna go and get her, and then uh, we're gonna get started. Now, the first, the first rule of trying to make something where you don't have a pattern is to go look in your closet. Um, that's the first thing I always do. It might be a bit tricky at first, especially if you're used to things having to look the way that you um, also want your project to look. But um, my point here is look for something that has a similar shape to what you're going to make. So if we have our dress here, it has that mini dress vibe, uh, needs to have a certain length, um, has the plunging neckline and also just the straps for... Um, for the shoulders. Um, the best thing that I could find in my closet was this dress. So I know it has the right length. It's probably a little bit too long, but that doesn't matter. Length we can always cut off. Um, it has 
kind of the right neckline. I think though that I'll make it probably go down here. So I'll use the pattern that's on the dress down here. Now obviously this dress looks nothing like the dress on the picture, but it has the same base. It has that base of just like front and back. Um, and then it also has the length that I'm looking for, like I said. Uh, and I think that by using this dress, we actually have a possibility to make a pattern and then just adjust it a bit. So obviously for the shoulders, I'm gonna make those a bit more narrow like this. And then I'm gonna follow this line down to here. Already then I know that I have um, the silhouette of the chest that I want. And then for the, uh, for the, uh, let's call it the armholes. <laughs> I'm just gonna try and see if I can follow this dress down to here. So we're gonna use we're gonna use the pattern here actually as a bit of a as a bit of a guide. And then on the back side, that's gonna get a bit more tricky. I'm not really sure. I think I'll just I think I'll just make it like a V, you know, like this. Make it nice or maybe like rounded so it's a bit smooth. And then. I just know that this dress fits me, so I know it has the right measure measurements in that sense. Lastly, like I said, the length is a bit too long. We're gonna find the feathers. I searched so long for feathers today, but I couldn't find it. But length is never a problem. You can always make something shorter, right? Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's take the dress off of Dolly and then um, start creating a pattern. Decir que te amo Pero no sé si estoy mezclando una vez más Lo que me das Y lo que quiero De pronto ya ya no sea mi realidad No sé si es amor es que Quiero estar solo La soledad me hace preso La condenación tus besos No sé si es amor Okay guys, the only thing I've done is cut the front and the back piece. You can now clearly see the shape of the other dress just now in this fabric. <laughs> so if I wanted to go on just like this, it would actually be uh, quite straightforward. Um, just finishing the dress with this shape, but uh, that's not what we're gonna do. And we're actually gonna use our uh, front piece and just cut a um, and cut an inside lining <laughs> for the dress on the front. Actually, um, the other dress also has that. But either way, I always think a lining is just very nice, especially for how um, your finished product ends up on the front. So. We're just gonna cut uh, this lining piece right here, but uh, obviously not off of this dress because we're gonna change um, change the pattern. So those two things are gonna happen, and um, the first thing I want to do is just look at Dolly and just start like tracing a bit, see what I want to do. So I'll do that with needles, and then cut the fabric. I'll just do it on one side. Um, and then I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll fold it over so I can make the equal adjustments on both sides. So all the pieces have obviously been cut and then um, separately I've sewn together the shoulders of the lining pieces and the front and back piece and now I'm gonna join um, now I'm gonna join the back side and uh, front pieces together uh, around the lining and neckline okay so the neckline is sewn all the way around together with the lining um, and now I've just turned it um, 
wrong sides together so that I can um, press the whole seam. Um, and after that, I'm just gonna top stitch it down so that it's gonna be really, really nice and smooth. And this fabric like really frays. So I wanna make sure that the neckline, like especially here at the front in the middle where the sharp point is, um, is gonna be secure, but also really smooth and tight. Okay guys, um, it's a few days later and um, I really want to just finish this dress so that I can get to the yellow dress because I've learned a lot. Um, I'm essentially just, I have another dress that I'm gonna copy for the yellow dress, but I'm just gonna show you this one first. It's almost finished. I, uh, I really only have the bottom edge here left and I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do the, the puffy uh, edge or if I'm just gonna leave it, like just tuck it in neatly. Um, so let's see. But the rest of the dress is done. Um, I will say I love that I did the uh, that I did this part a bit deeper than I did on the original dress. Um, because the original dress is like very straight, it doesn't really have a lot of shape on the sides, so it's a bit big on me when I put it on, like here on the sides. Um, but other than that, the dress is uh, done. Since it frayed so much, these became like very thin. I would have liked them to be a little bit wider. So I did do some research on the all-knowing YouTube, and I'll do a diff different technique on the other dress. I'm gonna figure out a way to take that, uh, to take that in a bit, um, but uh, I'm not gonna do that in this video. So, on to the next dress. Which is, people, it's from H&M, it's amazing. I've just bought it, so, um, and I realized that this is exactly the, the type of shape I want for my yellow dress. Um, did realize those two things on separate occasions, but anyway. Um, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna copy the, the, the um, bodice part and the skirt part of the dress. Not sure about the sleeves yet. I don't think I'll copy the sleeves. Um, what I wanna do instead is actually create the same type of straps, uh, but using that new technique that I uh, found. So um, I'm gonna cut out the parts for, uh, for this dress. Ooh. I almost forgot. This dress have a very like peculiar <laughs> opening in the back. <laughs> it um it looks great though. It's fine, but um it has a little zipper here and then it has this like I don't know, corset looking, I don't know. Yeah. String uh closing <laughs> up on the back and I'm not going to do that. Um what I want to do instead is make sure that um, I can do a zipper just straight down the back. So that's also what we're going to do. Let's get started. Okay guys, I've cut out the middle section, the front section. And I've cut the sides all the way up on the front side section. But as you can see, I've not fully uh, cut the piece after the way the dress looks because um, on the dress we have those puff sleeves and those are essentially attached right where we would want an armhole <laughs> if we're gonna have um, straps instead of the puff sleeves. Um, so like I said, this is the section, the section here, uh, it's the front section that I've uh, traced here. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my uh, so thingy <laughs> to kind of draw in an armhole here <clears throat> or half an armhole and then I'm gonna cut out the side back section which is this section that's also the first one that's a bit funny here um, as I want to put in a zipper I also need to include um, parts of or half of uh, the middle back section so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace when I trace the um, the back part, I'm actually going to trace um, all of the side section, all of the side back side section, and include half of the middle section, and then I'm just going to run them both uh, up to a certain height so that I can adjust how I want the dress uh, to look on the back, and once that is done, I'll just copy those pieces um, for the other sides. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm 
Entiendo toda la gravedad Tú tan hermoso y no te ofrezco nada Ok, so far, so good uh, It's a little bit of a challenge, but I like that um, Especially, you know, turning it from puff sleeves to strap sleeves But um, either way, I'm really, really happy with how far we got um, One, I think the neckline is going to be really cool It's going to have more of a squared and then heart-shaped neckline um, and then secondly, I just really like the shape of this dress. It's much more form-fitting than the other dress, and that I like. So um, that's really good. For the sleeves, I used a tailor ruler. Um, it's one that I got in a package um, from Lother, 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 Lotherlow. <laughs> Those guys have a tricky company name. I'll put it down uh, below here so that you can Google it yourself. What I'm going to do now is... Um, I'm gonna just do some adjustments and I think that I might do a little bit of a dart on the on the back piece. It's kind of um, bulking a bit here. So I think I'm gonna see if I can just draw up a dart here. And once I've done that, I'm actually gonna just cut all the pieces. So double of double of, of the two side pieces, um, and then obviously also lining for everything. So yeah. I'll do that and then I'll meet you back when it's time for the fun stuff, the sewing. You can see here that I've pinned the, the front side pieces together and the middle section. And on the inside you have the full pin here. So that's what we will uh, sew first. Um, I'll do the same for the lining pieces. And when that is done, I'm going to join these two pieces together, but just um, the seam right here. Um, I'm going to leave the top open, just saying. Um, so just the seam right here. That's what I'll also do. All right, guys. I'll sew these two seams on both the outer fabric and lining fabric, and then I'll join them together up here. And then we can do that. I have sewn um, the front and lining piece together and I just wanted to show you something really quick on my machine I can both um, secure a thread so instead of going backwards and forwards like I've done up here to secure the thread I actually have a setting where I can do it I don't use it very often I prefer this but um, when you want a really really clean finish on a stitch that's going to be like, yeah, like this dress, like the front here, it's going to be really visible. Um, the first thing I did was to do this like securing of the thread right here, but I also did it on both of the sides. And then I'm also going to snip uh, my fabric here, and this will just help keep this part like really secure if I snip it really closely. I would say there are three things that really like changed the game for me in terms of making stuff look really neat so that's definitely using the needle of the machine to keep everything in place and like shifting the fabric as I want to in like really sharp turns uh, snipping and then obviously also uh, pressing and then I'm gonna top stitch it and then we're gonna move on to the back side <laughs> Here she is, she is almost ready. Um, I have uh, done the top stitching on the decolletage. I still need to do top stitching here on the back, but we'll get to that. Uh, I've also trimmed the bottom so that it's even all the way around. 
and then I also trimmed the lining and sewed up the edge. Um, when it comes to how I did um, the lining and the straps, I found a really, really, really good video. So I'm linking that below in the description. Please check it out. I think my video explains it a bit as well, but that video has like, I don't know, 3 million views. So it's really, really good. Go in and check it out. The only thing we have left to do, or two things we have left to do, I'm gonna install the zipper, and then we're also, um, probably, I'm not sure yet actually, but I think so, we're adding the, the fringe. The um, zipper part is not my expertise, so as always, ask YouTube, um, she knows everything, so. I'm actually just gonna hand stitch onto the dress, so I'm not gonna show that either. Let's uh, let's skip to the good part. Honestly, I uh, I'm a bit surprised myself. Wait, it's a bit dark. There we go, a little bit lighter. It's done. I had to do a little bit of adjustment to the shoulder straps. I had to take them in, um, and then <laughs> I added a feather boa. Can you see it? It's right there. I added a feather boa. Honestly, um, this is, this is, I don't think, this is the best um, piece of, or piece of clothing that I've ever made. Uh, really proud of myself, to be honest. I know I will wear this dress, because I actually really, I really love it. It just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I took a few photos of myself. Don't mind the whole, obviously not made hair and stuff, but look at the shoes and the dress. So I'll shoot them here and then I'll see you next Monday. Bye.